You might recognize what we have here in yellow as a, the general form of a P series. And what we're going to do in this video is think about under which conditions, under for what P's will this P series converge? And for it to be a P series, by definition, P is going to be greater than zero. So I've set up some visualizations to think about how we are going to understand when this P series converges. So over here you have the graph, this curve right here, that's y is equal to one over x to the p. And we're saying it in general terms, because p is greater than zero, we know it's going to be a decreasing function like this. Once again, that's y is equal to one over x to the p. And now what we've shaded in ahead of time, underneath that curve, above the positive x-axis, that is the integral from one to infinity, from one to infinity, the improper integral of one over x to the p dx. So that's this area that I have already shaded in. You see it in white in both of these graphs. And what we're going to hopefully see visually is that there's a very close convergence or divergence relationship between this p series and this integral right over here. Because when, we've, when, we've, when we look at this left-hand graph, we see that this p-series can be viewed as an upper Riemann approximation of that area. What, is that, what do I mean by that? Well, think about, think about the area of this first, I guess you could say this first rectangle. The width is one, and its height is one over one over one to the p. So this would be the first term in this P series. This would, this would just be an area of one. This the scale, the X and Y scales are not the same. This one right over here, its area would be one over two to the P. This area is one over three to the P. So the sum of the areas of these rectangles, that is what this P series is. And you can see that each of these rectangles, they are covering more than the area under the curve. And so we know the area under the curve, that's going to be greater than zero. This P series is going to be greater than this integral, greater than the area under the curve. But if we add one to the area under the curve, so now we're not just talking about the white area, we're also talking about this red area here. Well then our P series is going to be less than that. Because the first term of our P series is equal to one. And then all of the other terms, you can view it as a lower Riemann approximation of the curve. And you can see they fit under the curve and they leave some area. So this is going to be less than that expression there. Now think about what happens. If we know, if we know that this right over here diverges, so if this improper integral diverges, it doesn't uh, converge to a finite value, well this, the P series is greater than that. So if this diverges, then that's going to diverge. Similarly, if this converges, the same integral right over here, if this converges, it goes to a finite value, well, one plus that is still going to converge. And so this, the RP series must also converge. It must go to a finite value. And what I'm, all, I'm, what I, all I'm talking about right here, this is really just the integral test when we, when we think about tests of convergence and divergence, but I'm just making sure that we have a nice uh, uh, conceptual understanding and not just blindly applying the integral test. So, and, and you could go the other way too. If the P series converges, then for sure this integral is going to converge. And if the P series diverges, then for sure this expression right over here is going to diverge and the, and the integral diverges. So we can say the P series converges if and only if this integral right over here converges. So figuring out under what conditions for what P does the P series converge, where it's boiling down to under what conditions does this integral converge. So let's scroll on down to give us some real estate to think about what has to be true for that integral to converge. So I'm gonna rewrite it. So we've got the integral from one to infinity, improper integral of one over x to the P dx. This is the same thing, this is the limit as I'll use the variable m, since we're already using n, as m approaches infinity, and the integral from one to m of one over, and actually let me just write that as x to the negative p. x to the negative p dx. And let me just focus on this, and we'll just remember that we're gonna have to take the limit as m approaches infinity. I don't wanna have to keep writing that over and over again. So let's think about what this is. So there's a couple of conditions. We know, we already know that P is greater than zero. We know that P is greater than zero, but there's two situations right over here. There's one situation when P is equal to one. 
If p is equal to 1, then this is just the integral of 1 over x. And so this thing is going to be the integral of ln of x. And we're going to go from 1 to m. And so this would be the natural log of m minus the natural log of 1. Well, e to the 0 power is 1. So the natural log, I'll write it out, the natural log of 1. But the natural log of 1 is just 0. So when in the, in the special case, I guess we can say, when p equals 1, this integral from 1 to m comes down to the natural log of m. Now let's think about the situation where p does not equal the, where p does not equal 1. Well there we're kind of just reversing the power rule that we learned in basic differentiation. So we'd increment that exponent. So it would be x to the negative p plus 1. And we could even write that as x to the 1 minus p. That's the same thing as negative p plus 1. And then we would divide by that. So 1 minus p. And we would go, we are gonna go, we are gonna go from 1 to m. And so this is going to be equal to, we could write this as m to the 1 minus p over 1 minus p minus 1 to the 1 minus p over 1 minus p. So now let's take the limits. So we remember, this integral, we want to take the antiderivative or the definite integral here, but then we want to take the limit as m approaches infinity. So what is the limit as m approaches infinity of natural log of natural log of m. Well, if m goes unbounded to infinity, well the natural log of that is still going to go to is still going to go to infinity. So when p equals 1, this thing doesn't converge. This thing is just unbounded. So p equals 1, we diverge. So we know that. So now let's look over here. Let's think about the limit as m approaches infinity of this expression right over here. And the only part that's really affected by the limit is the part that has m. So we could even write this as, we could take this 1 over 1 minus p out of this. We could say 1 over 1 minus p times the limit as m approaches infinity of m to the 1 minus p. And then separately we can subtract 1 to the 1 minus p. Well, for, for any exponent, that's just going to be 1 over 1 minus p. Is that right? Yeah, no matter what exponent I put up here, 1 to any power is going to be 1. And so the interesting thing about whether it converges or not is this part of the expression right over here. And it's all going to depend on whether this exponent is positive or negative. If 1 minus p is greater than 0, well, if I'm taking a, a if I'm going to infinity and I'm taking that thing to a positive exponent, well, then this is going to diverge. And so in this situation, we diverge. And 1 minus p is greater than 0. We can add p to both sides. That's the situation. That's the same thing as 1 being greater than p, or p being less than 1. We are going to diverge. So so far, we know that p is going to be greater than 0. And so we saw if p is 1 or if it's less than 1, we're going to diverge. But if this exponent right over here is negative, if 1 minus p is less than 0, well, think about it. Then it's going to be then it's going to be 1 over m to some positive exponent is one way to think about it. So as m approaches infinity, this whole thing is going to approach 0. So this is actually going to be a situation where we converge, where we get to a finite value. And so we add p to both sides. We have 1 is less than p. We converge. So there you have it. We have established this integral is going to converge only in the situation where p is greater than 1. p greater than 1, you are going to converge. And if 0 is less than p is less than or equal to 1, you are going to diverge. And those are then the exact, because this, the, our p series converges if and only if this integral converges. And so these exact same constraints apply to our original p series. Our original p series converges only in the situation where p is greater than 1, then we converge. And if 0 is less than p is less than or equal to 1, we diverge. There you go.